Ungumtrat. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. This is Lesser. And, And this, this is, is You've Got Five Options. Sorry, Marta, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I was trying to uh, blend into, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I will just, I will just stop talking. No, we are three people here. So sometimes we just talk at the same time. So sorry, yeah, you yeah. listeners. <laughs> yeah. Just just to make it clear, not us, but you listeners, uh, our dear, dear listeners, yes, uh, apologies for any little uh, technical issues or big technical issues mm. if you are uh, uh, listening to our live shows. <laughs> yeah, the live show is the one where uh, some technical issues tend to visit us just to check if we are a capable of, you know, holding it together mm -hmm. in case of challenges. And uh, so far we have been. <laughs> yes, hopefully. Hopefully no more tests. Hopefully the last one uh, when we actually were not on air during the live show was the ultimate test. And from now and on, everything will, you know, fly. Yes, for those of you who have not noticed or haven't um, heard, we actually were not live when we thought we are live. So that was, I think, the biggest test for us because we, we started to receive uh, actually messages from our listeners like, guys, where are you? Uh, I would like to say thank you for all of those people who actually were uh, nice enough to send us a text message and inform us that we are not on air. So and by the way, it means that someone is listening. That's always very nice, very good feedback. But yeah, uh, so guys, if you ever don't hear us, then text us because it's very useful. Yeah, and if you were not able to listen to us either because we were not on air or because it was not the right time for you, you can find our uh, episodes and our live shows on our YouTube channel. So, you know, just go to YouTube, type in you've got five options and you'll find our episodes there. And if you are more of a podcast listener, you can also find uh, our shows uh, in your podcast app. And in general, you can go to the mother of uh, You've Got Five Options. And the mother is the five options .com. Five as a number. That's our awesome website where you can find it all. Correcto. Correcto. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Anna came up with this. Uh, yes, one I of came our... up with a lot of weird things. Yeah. Mm. So. Today's show is the second part of a solution to Michael's challenge. Mm -hmm. And we will read the challenge. Actually, let's start by reading the challenge and then we go into it. Okay, so here's Michael's challenge. And I would like to just mention Michael is, of course, invented name because challenge as most of our challenges came anonymously. So it goes like this. I have recently met my ex at a party. We haven't seen each other for a while and the party was a really good one. We ended up having a great time talking about the old times, drinking, dancing, and we ended up sleeping together. The next day was pretty awkward as we didn't really know what to say to each other. I am not sure if it meant anything or if it was just a mistake and I should forget that it ever happened. I wouldn't like my ex to feel offended that I never said or done anything. I must admit that I can't stop thinking about her. Could you advise me on how to approach that tricky situation? Yes, and of course, we have prepared five options for Michael. <gasps> and we have uh, talked about the first two options in the previous show. And the first option was inner workout. Find out where you're at. So in this option, we were asking Michael to ask himself a few questions and imagine a few scenarios that would help him determine which of the following options to take or come up with his own option. Because as always, we are not any kind of experts. We are just people who come up with five options or five questions to ask yourself or five scenarios to imagine, five steps in order to sparkle your own inspiration 
and your own way of solving your challenge. So Marta, would you say that we are experts on inspiring people? Maybe, hopefully, yeah, that that would be a nice thing mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was the first option. And the second one was pretend that nothing ever happened. And uh, here in the studio, we were not big fans of that option. No uh, one was. No. And uh, yet it's still an option and it could be the right one for you, Michael. So we have presented the possible uh, pitfalls, the possible advantages and when it could be a good option. And yeah, if you want to find out uh, all the you know details, you have to listen to the previous show. I, I would like to say that although we were not fans of the options, pretend nothing happened, I personally discovered that I have experienced that option. Plus, I think that this happens more often than it's, let's say, favored, you know, so actually that's quite weird because normally when you present that option, pretend that nothing ever happened, everyone is like, no, this is a bad option. And yet we people tend to do it. Yeah, because we might uh, find it easier to avoid than confront. Yes. So, but it, we have discussed uh, some pros and cons of that option. So. Yeah. And now we will go into the following options. And we for today have option three, forgive and forget. Option four, test the ground. And option five, go get her. And uh, we will start with the with option number three, forgive and forget. It's a good option when you know that you don't really have deeper feelings for your ex. So you don't really not want anything to come out of it. And yet you would like to address it in some way and then quickly move on to another to just, you know, being OK with it. I thought you would say to another ex. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah. And it's a good option because you mentioned that you wouldn't like her to feel offended. So you would actually like to address it so that you can both just forgive yourselves and uh, move on. And it could also be a good option when there are some practical uh, things like you actually have some common friends and you would like to avoid people, you know, one of you talking to the friends and some kind of like, you know, behind the back uh, conversations. Or she left earrings at your place. True story. OK, we, we really see, can see <laughs> that uh, Anna has some experience in that department. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a speculation. I just imagine things. So, you know, basically that option is about gathering your men balls and just calling her and just, you know, having a conversation about what happened, clear the air between the two of you and then forgive and forget and just move on with your life. What do you think, Anna? So I guess this is more like a elaborated and a little bit more courageous version of option number two. Because you said it's in a case if you think that, you know, this was a mistake and, and so on. But actually you decide for the confrontation, for a discussion when you actually do have a short conversation or something. And then you are both like, OK, let's forget about it. So you actually do have a closure mm -hmm. to that. Right. Um, I think that that would be definitely a very good option. I like it more than option number two. However, I think this option could also apply. And I don't know what do you have in your magical sleeve, because there could also be an option that he goes and get her. That's option five. Go get her. And she doesn't want to be get gotten. Mm -hmm. Gotten. Yes. Is my English correct? And then you have to again forgive and forget. But because of different reasons. Yeah. And then, well, first of all, it depends how you both feel about this situation, because sometimes you can feel pretty bad if you have, you know, just uh, slept with your ex and maybe you're not proud of yourself, maybe some regret kicks in or something and it can produce some bad blood for yourself or between the two of you. So forgiveness is actually an important uh, thing because we do make mistakes. And beating our, ourselves up over and over again is not a good idea. Mm -hmm. So it actually is a good idea to forgive, to forgive yourself if you feel that you have made a mistake and also forgive the other person in case the response, you know, it like in case it actually woke up some feelings in you, but she actually doesn't have any feelings towards you. It is also to forgive her for, I mean, getting into the situation where you could get some hopes up. But I think the most important part of it is to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I agree. Because you can, I could imagine you might feel confused about yourself and also maybe a little bit with a moral hangover depending on the situation it's it's nothing or like you know you are coming back to the same uh, relation that is over and you know that there can be a lot of circumstances i think forgiveness is quite important here yeah, yeah. and of course it's an option is forgive and forget mm -hmm. so that's why the, the the more important part is the forgive because yeah. just trying to forget, like we discussed in the option number, number two, two, may not be uh, having that many advantages and yeah. might have quite some potential pitfalls. So it is not easy to have a conversation about uh, after such a situation, especially mm -hmm. if you don't know where the other person is, if you don't know how are her feelings and you may encounter quite an emotional reaction from her. But it's actually it has a lot of good things in it and the good things in it are actually the ones that are uh, mentioned in the option number two why we have discussed it why it might be a good idea to actually yeah discuss. i actually i totally agree because for instance also when i'm thinking comparing option two and three right now when i'm thinking for instance in option number two if you pretend that nothing happened and she pretends that nothing happened but let's say something on her side has changed so she started to get feelings and so on maybe she thinks he needs some time to figure out maybe he will come around so you might also prolong this i would say this whole situation because in her head she might be waiting actually for some kind of a closure or response or she thinks you need to, you know, uh, figure out and then you will call her after a month or so. So, yeah, I, f I like this option way more than option number two. Yeah, so that was option number three, forgive and forget. Now we have option number four, which is test the ground. Mm. So this option is actually a good one or recommendable one if you are unable to determine where you are with your feelings and you suspect that you might be onto something because you've mentioned that you can't stop thinking about her, but you might not know what it actually means because the sole fact that you cannot forget get or you cannot stop thinking about someone it could be your conscious telling you you know i have to talk to her i have to clear the air and so on or it could be that you actually do have some feelings but you don't really know where it's coming from so this option could be a viable solution where you would actually like to see where are you at you know what is it that you are uh, onto with your feelings it could also be a very good option if you have actually answered in the first option the question, how do you feel about her? And you have uh, answered, oh, shit, I love her. Uh, but you have no idea how she feels about you. Mm -hmm. So that could also be a good option when you know you are onto something with your feelings, but you have no idea how does it look like from her side. So it could be like a pretty safe way of uh, figuring it out. So basically, the strategy here is to invite her out for a coffee, for example, and, you know, have a talk. And you can first have like a, you know, like a small talk and just try to see how is the energy, how does the situation look like between the two of you, what is her response to the invitation itself. And you can exactly because if she will say, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't think it's a good idea. I think you you have tested the ground. Yeah, you got some answers there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, assuming that she agrees mm -hmm. to uh, to meet with you, you can meet, you can see how the conversation goes. And in the you know, in the worst case, if you come to a conclusion that no, you are actually not feeling anything or you are totally sure she's not feeling anything, you can actually turn it into option three and, you know, just have just have a conversation about what happened, clear the air and so on. Or you could actually start to see that there is some energy between the two of you. There is some, you know, maybe attraction, maybe something, you know, you could potentially look into. And you know, if you notice that there is uh, something you could build on, you could basically try to see if she would like to go on another coffee anytime <laughs> soon. You know what they say about coffee between access? But it's never about coffee. Mm. Not from my experience this time. Whoa, <laughs> that's actually from experience of uh, my other friends. You know, it's like I, I remember I always got this like 
coffee with eggs if your ex invites you for a coffee it will not end up with coffee and the same like let's watch movies i ah, know that one is common that one like is why like would ex invite you to watch movies that is very obvious unless that's the movie from his wedding and he invited you with his wife you know would you like to see which actually no that's That's also no. kind of terrible. The, the coffee can be to really meet and clarify some stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the movie, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm struggling to find any neutral. Unless uh, it's an invitation for a cinema, then it's a bit different because it's how? A, public, a public space. And uh, how is that like? What What's the deal here? If your ex invites you to the cinema, that's inviting you for a date. I, but isn't coffee then also a date? It could be a date, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it depends, right? But yeah. for me, if a, if an ex would call me and tell me he would like to see a movie with me, that would have a different sensation to me than mm -hmm. if an ex would ask me, could we have a coffee? I would mm -hmm. feel more like he would like to probably discuss some stuff. He has some unresolved issues yeah. with me and maybe would like to wa walk through some things, especially that I am married with the same husband <laughs> for 15 years. So if any ex would like to invite me for a coffee, I really don't think they would like to like, you know, try to hit on me. But <laughs> you never know, Marta, you would be surprised what kind of people are in this world. But you know, with the movie, actually, you are right, because if someone invites you to the movie to his, her play, Okay, that's obvious. But if yeah. someone invites you for a movie in a cinema, your ex invites, so th he doesn't want to talk because you cannot talk in a cinema unless you are supposed to grab a bite or coffee before. And second of all, he doesn't want to, I don't know, like have sex with you because you are in a public space. So actually, what is the cinema thing? The only thing that comes to my mind is that You were both actually enjoying watching movies together and you have the same taste and maybe there is still like that kind of connection because then it doesn't really have the, you know, the, the connotation of, yeah, we are watching a movie on a couch, so I'm hoping for something. Well, I don't know, Anna, if you have ever been watching any American movies, but it's a typical date to get someone to the cinema. It's a typical, you know, it's like the one of the three typical reasons yeah. to go out on a date. Yeah. Or uh, solutions for a date. Yeah. Don't you think, Leslie? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> very common. Really? Yeah. Like, I if I ex invites you for to watch um, a movie in a cinema, it, would you consider this as a date? Uh, Any well, that depends on the relationship and how long it's been since you saw the person. And I think, like, what kind of... No, no, of course. But if it's just... If you like dating, if it's mm -hmm. not an ex, like, it's common yeah. to go to the movies yeah that uh, okay like, that I that agree. scenario yeah and then like you said it's not literally if you go to the movies it's not to have like a discussion <laughs> you know so yeah. it feels a little more like a day date i would say maybe. what is it is it that the dark room factor yeah maybe i don't know what i wonder what is well this? i can imagine that you might have a scenario where you have an ex with mm -hmm. whom you both have zero feelings. It ended up you're like a brother and sister and you're like brother and sister both like watching Spider-Man movies. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, you're both excited about, I don't know, Marvel or whatever kind of thing. And it is the thing mm. that you have in common because you are two weird, no, not weird, those geeks. <laughs> <laughs> two weirdos. No, that's not what I wanted to say. I wanted to say two geeks or two people who, who are, are very really much into that thing. Yeah. 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 And then you can only understand each other while watching this movie. Like, yeah. I I want to share it with you because we are both nerds and, you know, rejects of the society because uh, we... You can connect somehow yeah. through that, you know. Um, yeah. okay. 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 In that in that case, yes, fine. So basically, if you have discovered, Michael, that you do have some feelings or you're confused about your feelings, testing the ground could be an option for you. You have now a lot of information on whether it should be in the cinema or not. <laughs> or uh, what does coffee means? <laughs> yeah, because actually uh, my proposal was like uh, going for a coffee. But of course, you could figure out, I don't know, going for a walk or yeah. whatever. It That's doesn't have to be. As long mm -hmm. as it is not going out for a bottle of vodka, <laughs> that could be. <laughs> yeah, because I thought also, you know, having a bite or a dinner in a restaurant could also be an option. But then, you know, you just had a situation with alcohol when you both loosen up. So maybe going for a dinner and then drinking a bottle of wine also might not be necessarily the best way, no, you know, that you get not. your judgment <laughs> blurred again. <clears throat> Coffee seems the most sober, yeah, yeah. in a daylight and not at anyone's home, I would say. Mm. No, coffee in a public 
Starbucks. Coffee in a Starbucks. Well, might okay, be difficult no to have a private conversation in Starbucks. Yeah, that's true. But anyway, it depends on what's actually your reason for mm -hmm. going there, right? So if your reason is to clarify the situation, if it is like, you know, like option number three, go and uh, and simply have a conversation and so on. But if your uh, strategy is to actually attract her <laughs> yeah. to like more going on to option number five and we will, we will go there, like, you know, go get her. Yeah, it depends what's your purpose. What's your reason for going out with her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now we will actually go to the last option, which is go get her. Mm. So it, uh, it's obvious that invite her for movies would be uh, one of the strategies mm. within the option. Yeah, invite her for the movies in your house. Uh, yes. So basically, in the first option, we have given you these few questions to ask yourself, you know, how do you feel about her? How was the relationship? Why did you guys actually break up? And we ask you also to imagine yourself in a few scenarios, like imagine your you guys are a couple again, how does it feel? And if in a case where you are like, oh, man, I really want it. It, it. I just I just miss her. And where have I been all this time? And so on. And if you are just 100% sure, that's her. I, I don't know. Mm. It was a mistake to ever break up. And uh, I just really, really want her. Then, yeah, go get her. Mm -hmm. And and of course, I mean, it could be the first step option four, where you test the ground first before you go get her or you don't care about uh, testing anything. And you are just, you know, like, I'm going to I'm going to try to get her no matter what. And uh, yeah, possible strategies. <laughs> I think uh, I would recommend to everyone, all of our listeners, the new one and the and the not so new one or meaning the one who are listening to us regularly to actually come back to our I think it was our second live show. Uh, it's on YouTube. It was about um, five strategies to get to a woman's heart. And we presented some really good tips there. And we actually asked our listeners to give us their favorite love movies. Then we counted all the votes and the five strategies that we have presented were the strategies that the guys in those most popular movies by our listeners have used on the ladies in the movies. So for instance, you know, we had a strategy be Richard Gere, you know, the pretty woman strategy or whatsoever. There is plenty of very interesting things that you could do. You could go mellow and, well, I don't want it to sound really like uh, offensive, but you could just have a conversation saying, listen, this happened and I realized that I have feelings and I would like to start again. That's something that would be the most, I would say, common thing, you yeah, know, being yeah. open, being, you know, just uh, a bit vulnerable. But you can also do something like, you know, uh, come with boombox in front of her window in the middle of the night with a song, stand there for five hours and hope for the best. There is plenty of things you can actually do. And I think it depends on the personality of the person mm -hmm. of Michael. I think it also depends on the relation that they had, yeah. because maybe they have something really special that they share a situation so you can reenact that situation. So it's more if you are this kind of crazy romantic, or the cheesy guy or the rational guy, or whatever, I think there is plenty to choose from. Yeah, and an interesting option would be to think what she would like, you know, mm -hmm. what would not only what kind of person you are, yeah. but actually what kind of person she is. Mm -hmm. And how, if you know her well, if you've been together, you might know what are the things she loves. You could invite her out to the place where you had your first date or, you know, something like that. Or just simply think about what is it that she loves doing? Mm -hmm. What was fun? Yeah. for you guys to do together yeah, that's a good that's a really good point you know it's those common interests that you also have maybe like art movies or going to museums or something or the first place you went on a date you know that's i think find something that's special to you the two of you you know that's yeah. i feel like because it's then a you, starting point you yeah know? then you also give this emotional load to it yeah. i think what is 
could be potentially scary about this option, both for Michael, like also for the girls who mm. might be in this situation, is that you have to be vulnerable because you are playing the sure. bank. So you don't know maybe necessarily what's on the other side and you are trying to get someone. Yeah. Uh, and with exit might be also a little bit more complicated because maybe you screwed up in the past or something like this. Um, but I think if you go for uh, either an honest conversation or something more like you said, Lasso, or a freaking grand gesture, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just go in and if you will get the rejection, first of all, rejection can be a very first reaction, uh, very like that kind of defensive one. So maybe after some time she would actually come around. Um, or, yeah, at least you try it, right? Mm -hmm. So which strategies you guys think are actually like the best? Hmm. Mm. Well, I, I have to agree with Lasse that it depends on the person, also on the personality, your personality, but also on the other person, right? Uh, but um, actually, I have to say I'm quite disappointed with myself right now because, you know, I'm always this fan of, you know, be bold and brave. And if I ever tried to, like, check out or, you know, propose something, I usually write a letter. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. the, but you know, it, there is nothing super like uh, fancy about it, but it's very honest. It's always honest and vulnerable. So I, I usually actually go with the letter because sometimes I also have some, well, email. Yeah, let's yeah. just let, yeah, because letter, <laughs> that's, that's too old. That's, <laughs> well, that's very fancy. Very, <laughs> very 19th century. Or, you know, I make an email and then I print it and then I sign it with yes. my signature. <laughs> and I leave a kiss with a lipstick. No, I'm joking. But uh, that actually just gives me clarity. Also, yeah. as you, Marta, mentioned, when you are writing something, mm. actually you also process it better and then you realize, you know, something. So it gives yeah. you time to reflect what it is mm -hmm. you want to say and how you feel and how to say it, you know. So exactly. it's a very good option, I feel like. So well. that that's my strategy. Yeah. At yeah. least this is preferable one. And what's the worst strategy? Ignoring it, maybe. <laughs> For yeah. me, it would be. <laughs> that's yeah. not really an option, I feel like. But just personally, mm -hmm. you know, I don't yeah. know. Try to ignore it. Yeah, well, the worst... That only works if both parts feel that way. Exactly. exactly. No, but the worst strategy to try to get someone, the oh, worst strategy you've ever... Yeah, to get someone back? To get someone back. The worst one you oh, have heard... Yeah. The worst one... Uh, you have ever read about, heard about, or watched a movie. Do it in public. Do it in public in front of other people. It's also <laughs> like proposing to someone in a group of friends, uh, family at the bar, and it's a mm -hmm. surprise when you never know what the outcome will be. And then you do it. Not only you uh, you face, you know, a humiliation, let's say, if she says no, but she is put in a very yeah, uncomfortable... put a lot of pressure, pressure. on that person. Doing it in public, well, you can do it in public among people you don't know. So it's yeah. some kind of a crowd or, or something. But that can also go bad. Because <laughs> someone can record it and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and where in public are you doing it? There might be thousands of people exactly. or something, yeah. <laughs> so I would say having a, a bigger amount of witness, that's not a good no. idea if you are trying to do it. Okay, so dear Michael, we have some good and maybe not so good <laughs> strategies. Although if you are like a guy that really needs to test your courage and like really, you know, see how brave you are, maybe that option is actually good for you. Um, we never judge, you know, it was just mm -hmm. uh, asking here at the studio which options for getting someone back are the best ones. Marta, and what do you think is the worst one? I, I think this part in the public because you actually really put uh, a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on the other person and the other person might feel really uncomfortable yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with that. So, yeah, I would also not like to have someone doing that to that, doing that to me. I would m really much rather have uh, something in private. Mm -hmm. But dear Michael, we have now you have now heard all the five options that we have prepared for you. And we definitely want to stress that the first option is the critical one. So inner workout. Find out where you're at. That's where you will be able to determine which is the best option for you. But then option two was pretend that nothing ever happened. Option three, forgive and forget. Option four, test the ground. And option five, go get her. So Michael, all the best luck to you. We hope that you'll be able to resolve the challenge in the best possible way for you and your ex. And 
Goodbye to all our listeners. Listeners. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. You are listening to You've Got Five Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, thefiveoptions.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks.